pots. Uh, uh, I'm a fairly casual potter, but that's that's my temperament. Mm -hmm. And uh, <coughs> when uh, uh, I worked in England at the Leach Pottery, uh, we, uh, we uh, my wife, first wife, and I were there as apprentices, and uh, we had to make pots very exactly because we were hired. As apprentices, we were learning to throw, really. And the way you learn to throw is to learn to put the clay exactly where you want it. <laughs> well, at the leech pottery, that was what we had to do. And it drove you crazy. <laughs> you know, I, I'll tell you, when we first went there, uh, we'd been potting for a couple of years, and but we knew we didn't know enough to, to run a pottery which is why we sought this apprenticeship. And uh, <coughs> we went there, and we were the first Americans who'd ever apprenticed at this pottery. And so they said, well, wait, these people, uh, they've gone through a, a professional training, and uh, uh, we, we'd actually, I hate to say it, we've been teaching a couple of years, <laughs> which we shouldn't have been, but uh, anyway. So they said, these are experienced potters. And we'll, but they have to learn our shape, so we'll give them a, an easy assignment. And uh, we were each given uh, uh, 150 pots to make for the next firing, which was three weeks away. And 150 pots is, for a professional potter is not many to make. And mm -hmm. You should be able to complete those in a couple of days. I started out with, I, uh, I, I'd make 50 mugs, 50 soup bowls, and 50 of something else. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what my wife had. So I said, I'll, I'll take the mugs first. And yeah. I s sat down, and they had a drawing and the dimensions of what this pot had to be. They had a bisque fired example of the pot, <coughs> so you could look at it in actuality. Mm -hmm. So I made a couple boards full of these mugs, and I called over <coughs> the uh, experienced potter from the studio who had been assigned to check our work and deal with it. There. Well, <coughs> that one's too tall. And that one's too swoopy. <laughs> that one's too stiff. That one's got the wrong proportion up there. And there is something wrong with every <coughs> one of the pots I made. And when I looked at him, I, I realized he was right. Mm -hmm. uh, and so <coughs> it, it took me, it took me all of the three weeks before the firing, before they would allow 50 pots through as the minimal standard for that pottery. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so, so that that's a that's an important thing to to learn that, that you. You do have to know how to control the clay. Make it do what you want. And then when you learn that control, then you, uh, or concurrently, you should be thinking about what you want. What, and, and as I said, some people will work very exactly and, and, and uh, very elegantly. Some people will work very rough and, and, uh, and uh, casually. Uh, that's something that you have to decide for your your personal decision. But uh, whatever you do, then I would say just stick to it, and eventually your personality will come out in the clay. It can't do anything else. Uh, I mean, if I go back now, <coughs> I can barely make the pots that we used to make at the Leach Potter. I mean, I could force myself sit down and make one of those, but it would really be moving against my personal feeling. And it's not something where I say, now I'm going to express myself, now I'm going to do it with great expression. It's just that it, it happens. If you make enough pots, you'll find your personality, that's all I can tell you. And, and the things that you like, and the things that you look at, if you look at in, in uh, galleries or in, in books or whatever, the things you like or, or will be the things that uh, are going to reflect your desires. Mm -hmm. so, and and there, if you look at 
history of pots, there are all kinds of things which have been thought to be the high point at different periods. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it just means that the, the, the whole culture had changed. And uh, the, the not, not that uh, people have changed their idea of what's good, it's just that the cultures are, are different. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have to accept that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, the, the man we worked with, Vernon Beach, <coughs> he, had, he had a phrase. He said, "If you look like, if you uh, if you try to be good, you look like somebody who's trying to be good, mm -hmm. and nobody believes in you. Mm -hmm. uh, if you let yourself." develop in a natural way, then you'll find your own voice. And, and that, I think, is what each person should strive.